when you're reading that part of the scripture, then you can't help but, but feel it. Yeah, you couldn't ask for anything. He's good. He's good. I, I would highly suggest it. We're in our Boston Center, which is really lovely because they just remodeled. Look at these. These books have a little bit of a story to them. Um, I translated them, but the, the way that came about is because back in 2000, I was in Italy taking some updating courses, and all the courses were in Italian. Uh, it wasn't until I took a course by Sister Elena Bosetti, who is the author of these books. I was so impressed with, with her and, and the message and everything that I, I, was, I wanted to translate it. I, I wanted to be able to, to bring it, you know, in English and, you know, make it available to the sisters and other people. It's such a heartfelt um, reading of, of the Gospels. You know, it's, it's not strictly Alexio. You know how Alexio does, like, line by line or something like that? This is more like, um, it'll take big general chunks of, of that particular Gospel, but give you, like, insights that you've never had before. I think part of it's because it's coming from a woman's perspective and... Uh, it makes, and, and honestly, I mean, she's, Ellen, Sister Elena was like so, in, so passionate about her love of scripture and everything. I mean, she, she almost cried during some of the, the lessons. It just, you were like, oh, imagine to feel that way about the, the scripture. She'd talk about the good shepherd and she'd get tears in her eyes, really. So when you're, when you're reading that part of the scripture, then it, you can't help but, but feel it. So I said, well, I wanted to translate it, so I, I started in 2000, and I started with Mark and Luke, and then I had this, the larger one of Matthew. I was about three quarters of the way through Matthew, and um, Katrina hit. Anybody remember Katrina? <laughs> that was, um, I was, I'm still in New Orleans, and we had to evacuate, so I took my laptop with me because I was not going to leave this behind. I was like, work in the middle of it. So I finished it in Boston when we evacuated, and um, and then the books came out, and so the whole complete series is here. And um, I don't know, I think y'all would like it. Another thing that's very nice about these books, uh, at the end of it, she'll have uh, a dialoguing with the word. Um, she has questions that are good for like a personal examination of conscience, how, how you take the scripture and really, you know, like make it part of your own life. It's it's simple, it's practical, and it's it's coming from like a, a brand new perspective. I think y'all would get a lot out of it. Um, they're not that big, see? So for the people that don't like huge volumes that I sometimes suggest these, are, I, I like them, I like them. I think it's uh, start with something easy and just work your way through. <laughs> Gotta tell you about these. These books, Fire of Mercy, Heart of the World, and I can't even pronounce his name. I think the closest thing is Erasmo, they have a Mary Cocky, so I call him Erasmo because I can't pronounce the last name. But um, I discovered this book when it first came out in 96, I think it was, 1996. I was down in Charleston for the summer just to help out. This book comes out. See how thick it is? I took one look at it and I said, who's going to buy this book? I said, it's, it looks really dry. It's too big. So I took it to Chapel. I sat down with it and I said, I need to, I need to know what the book is about just in order to sell it, right? So I start with the introduction got so caught in the introduction, I said, if the introduction is this good, what's the rest of the book going to be like? The introduction was incredible. Then it started with the genealogy of Jesus. It's, it's a, let me tell you what it's about. It's Alexio Divina on the Gospel of Matthew. And this only goes up to like chapter 11 or 12. It ends with that, that part of Matthew, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened. That's what it ends on. I said, it's only a partial Lexio on the Gospel of Matthew. Look at the size of it, right? So after the introduction, I said, well, let me try the actual book itself and see if it's any good. I start with the genealogy of Jesus. And I was absolutely like, oh, if this guy can do a Alexio like this on the genealogy of Jesus, the rest of it's got to be incredible. His background, I think, is Greek and Spanish. He's also a professor of literature. And um, he's not a priest. He's a married man. But he's, he's so well versed in this. He actually translates you know, the, the lines of the Gospel of Matthew from the original Greek. Him being Greek, he's all set. So I, you get these insights into the Greek New Testament that at the end of it, you're saying, I wish I could read the New Testament that way. But it's such a heartfelt reading of the Gospel of Matthew. Just for one, for instance, one thing from that I remember from the introduction was um, he said, 
the old rabbis used to say, and I, if I had the exact thing I could read it to you, the old rabbis used to say, you know, to read to read the scripture in a translation is like kissing your wife through a handkerchief. It loses something in the translation. So that's why he goes back to the original Greek, and he has these incredible insights. And he'll take, sometimes it's a sentence, sometimes it's a phrase of the Gospel of Matthew, and he has these beautiful reflections on um, the infancy narratives, uh, the parts of St. Joseph, how much is written on St. Joseph, okay, in, in the Gospel of Matthew, and yet he has these beautiful reflections. It's a, uh, he, you can tell that that the author is, is passionately in love with the scripture, and that's what's communicated. So they're, they're just long enough. Let me see if I could, this is volume one. This is volume two, which came out in 2003, and it takes it from Matthew 11, I think, through 18. I thought that this would be the end of it, that, that it would be two, Matthew in two volumes. He's saving the passion narratives for the third volume, which I can't wait for that to come out. But they are a little pricey, I mean, at least for a nun's <laughs> budget. They're about $30, but uh, well spent, very well spent. I've used these year after year. I, you never exhaust it. It's hard to exhaust scripture, but even the commentary, it's underlined and highlighted. Um, I would never give away my copy of the book because I might never see it again. So if one of the sisters asks, I buy them a copy. I mean, my my allowance was kind of blown for the year. I mean, <laughs> buying the sisters their own copy of Erasmo so that they could enjoy it themselves. But for those of, for those of you who, who love the scripture, but, but want to stay away from the academic side of it, that, that wants something that's, um, that's meaty, but at the same time is really, really heartfelt. I mean, you finish reading it and, and you just, oh, that was gorgeous, that was beautiful. You know, you just, and you go back for more. It makes you hungry for more, it really does. Then this would be the book. Please don't be put off by the size or, or the fact that it, that it looks a little dry. Trust me, it's, it's not. Um, when, when people come into the book center and they're asking, you know, wh um, what would I suggest for scripture study or for Lexio? I always suggest this, and if they have any hesitation, I would tell them, you don't like it, you bring it back, I'll buy it from you. And I'll, and I'll give it away. And nobody's ever brought it back, okay? Nobody has ever brought it back. Everyone comes back instead and buys copies for, to give away to other people. Um, if you know any priests that you'd like to get a gift for, this is perfect. This is perfect sermon material. Yeah, you couldn't ask for anything better. You really couldn't. But um, when, when Sister Ann was asking me, you know, have he talked about this and I said, I don't know if I have, but this is absolutely my favorite book. Now, if <laughs> the sisters kind of laughed because they said, Sister Julia, every time you talk about a book is your favorite book, I said, no, but hands down, the books by Erasmo are absolutely my favorite book because I keep going back to it. It is, um, it is this, these two, these two volumes um, has given me such a love for scripture. You know, you, you might start out with a, um, real love for scripture, but when you find a book like this that really speaks to you, you want to share it with other people and say, you know, y'all might find the same thing. It's, um, it's not so, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's not academic, but at the same time, he has, like, the Greek words from the scripture that just make it so much richer. He has quotations from, you know, literature. He, he has such a background himself of, um, he, he's also translated, um, books by um, von Balthasar from the original German. He translated Heart of the World, which is, is one of my favorite books. So he has that poetic type of, of um, language. So so he's not just, it's not just dry. You really do finish it and say, oh, that was just lovely. So if y'all want to get something for yourself that, that is really, you'll enjoy it for years to come. You will end up getting other copies for people. I'm sure you will. Um, this would be the book then, these two. Fire of Mercy, Heart of the World. <laughs> so many good things are inside these dry looking covers, please. Um, get yourself a copy. Do yourself a favor and get yourself. Start with one and just work your way through. You won't regret it. It's, it really truly is one of the most beautiful books I've read and I highly, highly recommend it.